Robbie Barbaro, welcome to the Health Coaches Podcast. I'm really happy to be here. It's always great to see you, Howard, and your smiling face. You too. It's always great to see you and your, your cornucopias of produce. Yes. Um, I wish I had more to show you today, but uh, I'm a little bit low. I'll be going to the wholesale market tomorrow, and I'll be stocking yeah. up, but there's a lot of goodies in the fridge. I got a lot of peaches in there right now, a lot of figs. <laughs> Howard, I bought the most incredible boysenberries I've ever had in my entire life yesterday. And if people listening to this have not had a boysenberry, you got to find a way to make it happen. It's hard to find, but it is a very, very special berry that just melts in your mouth and it truly, truly tastes like candy. Wow. Well, we, we, we start, we planted one last year. It's, it's come up, but it hasn't borne any berries yet. So <laughs> yeah. now, now, I'm, now, I'm happy to hear you planted one. Now I'm just going to go read to it or something. See if I yeah, can. Yeah, seriously. Play some, get some music. Play some nice, you know, classical music to that uh, bush. <laughs> cool. So, so the reason I wanted to talk to you is not not just your uh, your fruit recommendations, um, but you have a lot you, of fun with that. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Let's just do that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, you, you and, and your partner, Cyrus Kambata, have a, a mega successful, I want to call it just a, 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 a lifestyle change program called Mastering Diabetes. Thank you. Um, and I know people who have gone through it and rave about it. I've, I know you guys. I know you're very, very thoughtful about how you help people change. And I just wanted to, you know, pick your brain about, like, what what goes into um, successfully coaching people, and I think specifically you work with groups, with cohorts, um, to get people to to make these changes. You know, you you and Cyrus, I think you both both uh, are living and thriving with type one diabetes, yes. and and you both espouse a a way of eating that's different from what mm -hmm. most people hear in the mainstream, and certainly what most people hear when they have from their endocrinologists yes right so yes. you're basically saying everything you've heard before is wrong and we are right and you know the terrible thing about your diet is that you guys look crazy young right? <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you have you have even less credibility <laughs> that's so, funny <laughs> so i'm i'm curious like what what do you do? What, like, what, what are the, uh, the obstacles that you face and the processes you go through? And maybe let's just start with when people come to you, what's stopping them from doing it already? Yeah, so I appreciate all those kind words. And, um, you know, Cyrus and I are just having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> I don't know what else to say other than that. Uh, uh, we're just doing our best and learning from every single client that comes through our program and um, always improving and, and doing the best we can to just make it a better experience. So I think the, the thing, like why are people not doing it? I think in our case, part of the reason we get a lot of, you know, see a lot of success in our program is because diabetes in particular is such a very objective condition to work with mm -hmm. and also quite quite simple to be honest like if people do the basics if you can get your clients to just you know go halfway i mean 70 percent of the way maybe even less big changes happen big changes happen and sometimes some people need to go further and, and, and that's fine but i think a lot of people they come to us just not knowing like they don't understand they did not know that they could eat large amounts of fruit if their overall fat intake was low. They didn't know they could enjoy quinoa and brown rice and potatoes and chickpeas and adzuki beans. They just didn't know that. They didn't know how to do it. So it's sort of, it's just the facts. It's, it's the aspects of the mastering diabetes method. Once people understand, then, okay, wait a minute, I, I, can, I can do that. Now that I just know that I actually have the ability to do it. Because it actually isn't, it's not, as you, as you know, it's not difficult. It, it, it's simple to understand. It's easy. It's not easy to implement. That's right. the truth. Well, it's, and, it's, it's easy to be there. It's, for a lot of people, it seems hard to get there. Mm, yeah. So I think part of our, 
one of our main teachings is to take it slow and to celebrate small steps in the right direction. So if people aren't beating themselves up throughout the process and are kind and gentle and celebrating the fact that what they're doing now is certainly better than what they were doing before, even though it's not mm -hmm. quote unquote perfect or something, I think that's a really beneficial part of just how our coaches approach each client in every situation. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you help people with that? Because most of the clients I have who are dealing with obesity or, or disease come in with a lot of shame. Like they feel like, you know, type one, okay, it's not your fault, but type two, yeah, it's definitely my fault, right? So if people are coming in with that kind of baggage, what are the moves you and your coaches do to, to, to flip them into patience, celebration, self-compassion mm -hmm. when they may have come in with a history of, oh God, I failed again? Yeah, it's a great question. I... I... I don't know if I know the exact answer of how it all, like it's some of it's, some of this stuff isn't necessarily um, like, wow, we planned to, we planned it this way. And this is exactly the way it's going to unfold. It's sort of who we are as a team, who we are as people and just our intentions. And I, I think people in our coaching program, they, they really resonate with it and they truly, truly feel the empathy. They tr feel, they true the, feel the, the understanding and the support. And when I also think we've done a very good job of curating our community. So our, the, the community happens in a Facebook group right now. Mm -hmm. And we just simply, we don't tolerate any type of behavior that's just not supportive. And, and for whatever reason, like we haven't had to deal with much problems. There's just, uh -huh. there's just a bunch of people that are just, I don't know, we've somehow attracted a bunch of really, really cool, supportive, loving, kind people. And they support each other. And we encourage our members to be vulnerable and I always say like the only thing I need for you to succeed in our coaching program is the willingness to communicate with us. That's it. That's all I need. Everything else will just unfold. The dominoes will fall. If you're willing to tell, come into the group every day and tell me I struggled, I, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. I could, whatever. I, I tried to do this and this went wrong. That's okay. We're going to know where you're at and we are going to continue to make, you know, micro adjustments, micro changes, and that is going to pay off in the long term. And there's just something that's just released when, mm -hmm. when you're able to communicate and, and also get the empathy from other people who have been through the same thing. And you have confidence that you can get out of this. It's really just a, just a huge community aspect. Mm. So what, what I think I'm hearing is that rather than having a protocol or a technique to flip someone into positivity, you just hire really positive, empathetic people who just sort of do it naturally. Yeah, I think a huge component of what we're doing is our team is inspiring. Our, we, we lead by example. When I believe, I believe this is a fundamental thing. And again, I don't know if there's science behind this or not. I haven't looked into it. I just, this is just a gut thing. Um, I think people want a leader. They want to be guided. They want that confidence and they respond to that. And they, to a certain extent, they don't want to let down their coach who's mm -hmm. putting in all this effort and energy. And it's like, it's, we're in this together and it's a team effort and we're celebrating this all. And so instead of, I know, you know, lots in behavior change and a lot of the research and theories, it's like, oh, let the patient like guide the whole thing. I, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I think they want a leader. They want to be told and guided and reminded and, and we're reminding them in, into their, what their own purpose is. We're always reminding them back to their why. We have them set smart goals when they first get in the program and we want them to see those goals and say those goals out loud, out loud at least once a day. So it's coming from them. It's coming from what they want, but we're the leaders and the guides that are helping them get what they want rather than getting lost in the short-term gratification of some sort of food or, or lifestyle choice that's not supporting that smart goal that they've set. Right. And, and you know, there's different types of coaching and your coaching is very much tied to a body of knowledge and experience that you and your coaches have that they don't. Correct. Right. So like I, I would think, you know, so they're bringing their goals, they're bringing their unique situation. You know, I've got three kids, I work two jobs or I can't do FODMAPs or whatever it is. They're bringing, they're kind of leading 
they're the expert on their lives yes. and you're and and you're the expert on the material and it sounds like you partner on implementation like how right. how that's the right. material We're, meets their lives that's exactly right that's exactly right we're the expert on the experts on what needs to happen how you can get in alignment with over 100 years of evidence-based research on why this program works. And we're going to find a way to fit that into your lifestyle because there's a million different ways to do it. There's, fun, there's these fundamental principles of doing the Master Nerbees method, but what it actually looks like, what does that food look like on your plate? How is it prepared? How does it get there? What time do you eat? So one thing you said at the, at the front is like, because diabetes is a very objective condition, you can sort of tell. And I guess diabetics... Are, do a lot more measuring than sure. most people. Yes. Right. So is this this is part of that like the the feedback loop? Like you can see your numbers almost instantly are getting better, and it's and it's it's measurements you uh, you have already believed in. Like you've already given credence to these measurements, and so the, it, it's a uh, it's like you have an ally in their instrumentation. Well, there's no question. Everybody believes in the metrics. I'll tell you that much. So everybody's buying in. They all know they want a fasting blood glucose under 100. If your C peptide is, is uh, more than sufficient, then you want an A1C of 5.6% or below. So we're all on the same page that the metrics are valuable and accurate and good. So um, it goes both ways uh, in the sense of how the objectivity of diabetes can actually help or hurt. So in the way that it hurts people is that when you don't have a lot of education, you haven't read the Mastering Diabetes book, and you aren't aware of insulin resistance and what causes it, then you could go and eat a Mastering Diabetes recipe, eat some fruit, test your blood glucose, and see, oh my gosh, an hour later, two hours later, I'm 200, I'm 250, I'm 300. This program is bogus. Who are these jokers? I eat by my meter. That's a common phrase in the world of diabetes. I eat by my meter. I know what foods cause a blood glucose spike and which ones don't. And that, in a sense, the objectivity of diabetes can make it confusing. That's part of the reason there's so much confusion around diabetes is because you can self-monitor. You can't mm -hmm. self-monitor your heart disease meal by meal. You don't mm -hmm. know if your arteries got clogged more or less after one meal. Same thing with chronic kidney disease. Same thing with fatty liver disease. You just don't know. You don't have the data. But people with diabetes do. So it can hurt in that sense. But... It can also help because when you join the Mastering Diabetes coaching program or you start implementing the method on your own by following the book, then you will get some quick wins. And those quick wins are huge. They start to build confidence. Okay, wait a minute. This is so, there's something here. Because like you said earlier, Howard, this is completely opposite of what they've been taught. It's, it's a complete 180. And it's, a, it's difficult. It's difficult to finally be like, okay, wait a minute. Like, I'm really going to do this. I'm really going to try this. And when you get a couple quick wins where you start eating more carbohydrate-rich foods and all of a sudden your fasting blood glucose is going down or your postprandial blood glucose level is lower than you could have ever imagined after eating a fruit-based breakfast, you're like, huh, okay, I'm seeing this science in play in my own body. And I don't care what any other doctor says on the internet, because it's not true in my own body. Fruit is not making my blood glucose spike. <laughs> and it's not making me need more medication. My medication needs are going down. My blood glucose levels are going down. And there's, there's this momentum behind that. And there's a certain excitement around it too. Like, wow, I, I found something. And a lot of people, they, they get very passionate about this. <laughs> they want to scream it from the rooftops. Yeah. So do you help people deal with the other people in their lives with family members, doctors? Cause like, you know, the, you probably have a selection bias of people who come to you are like a little more uh, adventuresome than There's others. There's no question. There's no question we have a selection bias because right now in the mastering diabetes coaching program, we are working with people who've chosen us. These are people who are willing to pay money out of their own pocket to come and join a lifestyle change program. So no question about the selection bias. Um, we do help people communicate and give tips of how they can handle family members and doctors. We really have a very, very good um, sort of like a checklist about how to communicate with your doctor. And one of the key elements is coming to your doctor and saying, look, these are my goals. I want to reduce my medication. I want to get my A1C to 5.6% or below. Can, when it comes to reducing medication, you ask the doctor, can you tell me 
what numbers you need to see to start reducing my medication. Mm. That is that is a golden question. The doctor's got they, all they can say is, okay, well, if your fasting blood glucose is under a hundred. Uh-huh. Seven days, whatever, whatever they're going to come up with, our so guy on it. But but yeah, they're yeah. forced to come up with something. They have to come up with an answer. You're, you're saying, look, I want to reduce my meds. What do you need to see from me? And then you and then they get, they get whatever they need to see. You go and do it. Then they're going to have to reduce your meds. Like the facts are the facts. Sorry, cut out for a second. You... Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's good. I was just saying. I was just saying that the doctor has to reduce your medications. They can't keep you on medications that are going to kill you. Right. And I love the question because it reminds me of like sales training. Yeah, right? exactly. Like you, you don't ask the question like, do you want it or not? Right. So yeah. if they go to the doctor and say like, they, you don't want to ask a question where the doctor gets to say it's impossible. You can't. This is a chronic disease for the rest of your life. Right. So and it doesn't game-changing cost, question. It's a game changing question. It doesn't cost the doctor anything to answer. They're not losing face. Like, that, you know, that's right. Right. They say, OK, if you want to fly, go, go ahead. If you yeah, t- absolutely. No question. Um, so one, one thing I see in, in, um, in some of my clients is they're doing well, their things are going along smoothly, they're getting a little complacent because, you know, kind of as they should, like this shouldn't be the most important thing in their lives, right? Sure. Like this, this is, a st- but at that point, they then get something on Facebook, or they see something on YouTube, or they get an email from someone. And it's, it kind of undercut, like they come back and they're like, yeah, but what about Peter Atia? What about low carb? What about keto? And even though like you've been through this a thousand times, you see, they, they, do, you, do you see that in people that they still come in with these doubts? So I, that certainly happens. And, and we have questions coming up in our Facebook group and whatnot. And we just continue to remind people of the science that you know, we've researched and we understand. And at the end of the day, it's not about I'm not going to argue with somebody. <laughs> I have no, no time or, or, or joy of arguing with somebody about things. Like, you choose your choice. That's a great quote from our director of lifestyle change, Kathy Buckner. You guys get to choose. We're just going to teach you of the consequences. So again, when it comes to diabetes, it's, it's pretty simple like, for us to be like, to teach the consequences. If you want to go and do and eat these other types of low carb meals and try these programs, you're going to see in your numbers, you will become more insulin resistant. You're not going to be able to eat carbohydrate rich foods without seeing blood glucose spikes. You can just test yourself. You can figure that out. It's very easy for type ones because you need to inject more insulin. And for those living with type two, they're going to see it as long as they have a blood glucose meter and they test themselves. So they can experiment as much as they want to. We encourage experimentation in order to get to a place of confidence and understanding, okay, wait a minute, this is just human biology. You're going to see this repeatedly. So you get to choose what you want to do, where you want to make compromises. We're not the food police. We just encourage you to set your goals and we're going to help you get there. And I think you're you know, talking about how people, they're in your, your coaching program for a while. They, they, they reach their goal. They become successful. And now they're like a little more complacent. They're like, oh, I have a little more flexibility here. And again, that's totally up to them. But what we are encouraging people to do is keep on setting new smart goals. Like keep on, keep on upping the ante. To, to stay on track because it's fun. It feels good to achieve goals and why not just keep going. And even if that goal is maintaining that goal, goal could be about maintaining something and that's fine too. And that's going to help prevent a slip, you know, a slide backwards, which is most people don't want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it sounds like you're taking a very sort of jujitsu approach, right? Which is hard for a lot of us in the plant-based world. Like we believe in our stuff so, so completely and we're used to being in, in debates and fights with people over it, that when one of our clients comes, like sometimes I have to take a deep breath, right? Yeah. And, and, but just to say, I love that, just to say, well, go, go try it. You know, you, we have, you have the tools. 100%. To, no to question. see for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, and again, I, I really believe that for us, this, this comes very easy because of the objectivity of diabetes and our clients have blood glucose meters and they can absolutely mm-hmm. see the consequences very quickly. So I don't know if you've thought about this, so I don't even know if it's a fair question, but how can people working with clients with other conditions that aren't as objective and don't lend themselves to measurement um, benefit from what you've discovered? I, I would say it's, it's gonna be more challenging. It's an added challenge uh, because things start to become more subjective. 
and you might be able to talk about how they feel. Um, but even then that can get a little bit, you know, a little bit challenging because when it comes to people who have gut microbiome challenges, if you start, you could start eating a bunch of bone broth or something. And pe- there are some things you can do that aren't really that great in the long term, but do have some sort of short term symptom relief. Mm-hmm. And that's where you got to really be. Education to help people stay on track, but I don't really have a, a great answer to your question. Uh-huh. I'm just sort of thinking a lot about way, ways to, to think about, um, numbers that can be, yeah. you know, that can be sort of self reinforcing. Right. Um, and I guess it's a, it's a good question. I mean, I'm trying to think of what numbers you could measure as well. I mean, if they don't have diabetes, then your blood glucose is going to, it actually probably hurts you in this case, because their blood glucose is going to be fine, even when they yeah. eat other things. So yeah, no, it's interesting, because I hadn't thought about that. But you know, like when, like, you know, we get addicted to video games, because we get this very concrete, I- immediate feedback. Mm. Right. And we get addicted to junk food because we get the concrete feedback that it tastes good and we get the heart disease and o- obesity, <laughs> diabetes right. down the road. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I'm going I'm to. I mean, it's, it's, it's the age old question. I mean, how do you get young people to make these changes when they have absolutely no health concerns? It, it's very challenging. Right. Although, you know, college athletes tend to be healthier than other people because they know they can feel it if they. Yeah. Right. So right. some some form of performance or or metric, um, you know, I'm, I've not been a fan of the sort of quantified life movement because I think it goes overboard. But I think there's elements of it. Sure. Um, yeah, I, don't know, so I think different well, people are going to respond to it in a different way. Honestly, I mean, some people, they, they really do appreciate that quantitative material. And some people just know, I, I don't want anything to do with mm-hmm. it. So knowing your client and getting to understand how they respond to things is very important. Mm-hmm. So what do you do when someone logs into the Facebook group and says, oh, I'm so ashamed, I, or even like, I'm not ashamed, but I don't understand. I, I was doing well, but now I, I went and I ate this high fat meal. I had a hamburger. Help me. Like, what's so here's your what happens. Here's what happens. Before even any coach or anybody chimes in, there's going to be dozens of comments from fellow members who are going to be just empathetic 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 just pure empathy just automatically Mm. happening and honestly those are the posts that get the most interaction but that's the stuff when people (laughs) come out of the woodworks and start writing how they had the same challenge and they overcame it and it's okay and tomorrow's a new day and try this recipe it's going to be okay um or just like you know don't overthink it like you know just just loving comments and that's just Mm. what ends up happening and it just goes back to having human nature. I'm a big fan of nonviolent communication and Marshall Rosenberg's work. And he teaches that, you know, outside of our basic needs, the number one human need is to contribute to life. Like to, that's what we want to do. We just, nothing makes us feel better than helping out somebody else. And that's what happens when a post like that, that comes up. People are like, oh, I see this as an opportunity to help and really contribute and um, hopefully you know, improve this person's life and relieve some little bit of stress. And, and then there you go, you have interactions. That's really interesting because I was just watching a YouTube talk by Jaron Lanier, who's this uh, computer scientist who basically says we should get off all social media because uh, because we're getting dopamine hits for hate and conflict and incendiary stuff. But it, but what like I'm thinking of is we get dopamine hits when people comment on our posts, right? Mm-hmm. So if you see like oh I made a post and people paid attention. Because like we have we have a problem at Wellstart often that when people do something that they're ashamed of, they go radio silent. Exactly. Right? That's, that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. I'm telling people, if you're willing to communicate with me, we can help you. Right. So so that when they do when somebody sees somebody else, like nobody wants to be the person who like like they don't, they don't, they've never had anyone be empathetic for them before. Right. Yeah. It's like such, it's, I mean, it's amazing. It's such a weird experience that when we're coaching people, they've never really been listened to. They've Mm -hmm. never really been appreciated. They've never been empathized with. And so when you see, if you're in the program and you screwed up and you see someone else has just admitted to screwing up and they're getting love. Yeah that really sounds like a powerful way to draw people in, to do something that, that feels very threatening to them otherwise. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I think, I mean, I just, I, I know there's just a lot of support happening in there. And, I, and we didn't fully realize how important the community aspect was going to be until we've seen it unfold over the past three plus years. Mm. One, one more question. I know you guys have done um, like live in-person retreats. I assume those are on hold at the moment. That's right. I don't know um, when the show is going live, but we've moved our... our to a retreat, our regular retreat into a virtual retreat, July 23rd to the 26th. Um, so we've decided to do an immersive online event. So we're kind of recreating the retreat experience, but we're going to do it in the, uh, each individual's home environment, which I think is actually very beneficial. Um, mm -hmm. We obviously will do in-person retreats when we can again, but, but we have a lot, of, a lot of excitement about this in the sense that it's cheaper, you don't have to travel, and you're going to have that intense experience in your own kitchen in your own living room and doing, doing, you know, body weight exercises in your own home with your own equipment. And that can help set the stage for some future habits, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So when you do the live retreats in person, what, what do people get out of that that they don't get out of the, or what's, what are the differences? The human to human connection is just cannot ever be replaced through these zoom calls. <laughs> it just can't. Um, and I think a major benefit of the in-person retreat is just, an immersive experience of where you are hanging out with others on the same path as you and us and our coaches and our medical director. Last time it was Jim Loomis in person all day. And as questions come up and especially for those using insulin to manage their blood glucose, for us to be able to talk all day long as they're making those decisions and think it through, there's really nothing like it, really nothing like it. And obviously we make the food for them. So that's fun. And they get to do, you know, we do like two exercise sessions a day. We're outside in the sun and the lectures are very entertaining and educational. The whole thing is just really fun. People love our retreats. Uh, do I need diabetes to go? <laughs> <laughs> anybody's welcome. Anybody's welcome. <laughs> can, I, can I send in somebody else's blood? <laughs> yeah. As long as you are, uh, anybody who wants to learn about diabetes would be welcome mm -hmm. because the lectures are very diabetes focused and a lot of nuances mm -hmm. in there. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's a fun, fun time. Cool. So if somebody, um, you know, this is a podcast for health coaches and, you know, I'm getting a, you know, a sense of the energy and the joy and the fun. I'm sure there's coaches who want to find out about like, are you hiring? Um, so we actually are hiring right now. I don't know. Again, I don't know when you're posting this, but, uh, today. Oh, okay. There you go. Perfect. Next week. I don't know. I love it. So hey, soon. we are hiring. So, um, we're looking for coaches. And, you know, the key, we obviously, you know, credentials and the history is important, but really the fundamental things are we're looking for coaches who, number one, have experience working with people who have diabetes. That's huge. And number two, we're looking for coaches who have experience coaching somebody from whatever diet they started out with, whether it's a standard American diet, whether that's a keto diet, that's a paleo diet, I don't care. They have worked with people who are doing some other diet and have successfully brought them towards doing a low-fat plant-based whole food diet. That's the type of coach we're looking for. Um, and everything else is extra. Right. And uh, your website is masteringdiabetes.com, right? So, yep. You type, if you type that in, it'll forward you to masteringdiabetes.org. And you can, the only way to get to the careers page is, I guess I'll have to, I can give you the URL in the chat box here. You can put it in the show notes. But okay. it's masteringdiabetes.org slash careers. Careers. Um, and so you can't really get it through like the footer or anything like that. You have to just have that URL. So that's where the job posting is listed. Okay. So, uh, and any coaches who can remember slash careers has already uh, yeah. jumped the, fir the first hurdle, totally. the first hiring totally. hurdle. That's exactly right. And honestly, that, you know, that should be the criteria, Howard. Don't even put it in the show notes. If they can't <laughs> figure that out, then uh, they're not going <laughs> to thrive at our company. This is All a right. digital yep. company. We don't have an office. Yeah, everything is digital. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So people are going to have to remember masteringdiabetes.org slash careers. That's it. Cool. Anything else that you want to talk, say about the program that I didn't ask about? Um, I just want to say thank you for having me on and doing what you're doing. I think we all have to play our part and health coaches are so necessary in this entire ecosystem. They are just as valuable as the medical doctors as the nurses, as the nurse practitioners, as the surgeons, 
we are all part of this system together and um, we have a lot of people to help and we can do this if we work hard and work together and, and uh, really just continue to have the desire to help people and, and good things are going to happen. So thanks for doing this. Thanks for anybody who's listening and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go celebrate this uh, episode. Of, uh, I'm going to try to find some boysenberries. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robbie Barbaro of MasteringDiabetes.org, thank you so much for all you do and for taking the time today. Thank you. Appreciate it.